Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic Lockdown Edition still. Mm. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, the Tech Clinic is where you submit your questions about bike tech and bike maintenance, and we'll do our best to answer them. And you can submit your questions using the hashtag AskGCNTech on social media and in the comments section down below. So first up this week, uh, without further ado, is a question from Jeff Yo, who says, hey, what's the useful life of a decent quality internal cam quick release skewer? Well, in truth, I've never had one fail. Um, they tend to last a very, very long time and they tend to outlast the wheels themselves, which is probably why I've never had one fail. Uh, and that's because, especially if you've been using a rim brake wheels, which I have most of my life, the rims do wear down and you end up replacing the wheels. Uh, skewers tend to be made of, of, of alloys, which, which don't corrode like steel does. And with, as is the case with most bike parts, you know, if you look after them, uh, keep them well maintained and clean them, they'll probably last even longer. Um, so yes, it's not something that you should be losing sleep about or worrying about. Next question is from Dirk Tolboom, who says, uh, my big chain ring is worn out and I want to replace it. I can't find the exact one. I think it's Shimano Sora 3550. Would I be okay if I replaced it with 105 5700? Uh, in short, yes, uh, you would. I think that should be fine. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is, you are going from a nine speed uh, class of components, a nine speed group set to um, a 10 speed uh, group of components between those two group sets. Um, but that means you might have to tweak the way your front derailleur is set up slightly, but it should, you should be able to get it to work. The key take home message for anyone who's changing out uh, a worn chain ring is that in looking for a new chain ring, you need to match uh, two things. So the number of bolts uh, on the chain ring that clamp onto the crank set, usually it's four or five. In this case, it's a five bolt chain ring. Shimano has now switched on, on more modern chain sets to four bolt chain sets. Um, the next thing you need to get right is the bolt spacing. This is the, well, the spacing between those bolts um, and the diameter of, of, of the hole on which they clamp onto. So most chain sets are 110 BCD. So you just need to match up the BCD. Um, Shimano, quite usefully on, on their, most of their road group sets now, they have universal bolt spacing irrespective of the chain rings. In the past, it's been you know 110, 130, and 140 usually on track chain sets. But yeah, now it's all 110 on Shimano, which is good. But yeah, I think you need a 110 five bolt chain ring. That 10 speed 105 one is that, so should be fine. Let us know how you get on when you change it, but that should work. Uh, next question is from Bug Boy. 152000. Great handle. Uh, he says, Hi, I've been interested in GCN's presentation of the Whoop Technology Suite. I'm not a competitive racer and I only uh, bike for fitness. I have to admit that I road bike mostly on days when I can't ride my mountain bike. Nobody's perfect, bug boy. Anyway, he says he also does CrossFit three days a week. Uh, would Whoop benefit someone who's not working towards any particular goal? Would the information it provides be helpful for everyday well-being? Love the show and all the work you've done uh, and you've put in from home. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Whoop. You've probably noticed me wearing it in most GCN videos. It's kind of like glued to my wrist. Um, I'm a big fan of how you can use it to track your recovery and your sort of overall well-being and it's good at reminding you to drink plenty of water and get enough sleep and it's cool that over time you get to learn how certain behaviors are negatively or positively impact your recovery whether that's stress or you know drinking alcohol or traveling on a plane or whatever it is that you do, um, it's cool. And you know, full disclosure, we do have a, a deal with Woot. You know, I understand that it's not for everyone and not everyone is gonna, is gonna find this kind of thing useful, but I'm a nerd and I like seeing data. And 
you know, I've, I found it really useful when I was training and trying my best to recover as optimally as possible uh, during the hour record. Yeah, that was an hour record mention. Tick it off uh, if you're playing bingo at home. And it can also turn recovery into a game, right? So this, is, this is tragic. This is really sad. But I, I find it cool. So we actually have a, um, a group uh, presenter group on, on Whoop, where it's, it's me, Powers, Manon and Hank are in this group and you can sort of compete to, to who gets the best recovery scores on, on the Whoop. <laughs> so uh, it's, the, it's like the least rock and roll <laughs> competition imaginable. But I find it fun and I'm quite good at it, um, tragically. <laughs> Getting lots of sleep and early nights. Um, next question is from Syriac Brems, who says, Hi Ollie, I've got a Ridley X Knight. Nice bike, that. Um, and recently have noticed that the fork's sitting loose in the frame, so he thinks he's, he's got a loose headset, basically. Uh, he's tightened the top cap, and he's serviced the headset, and he's put new grease in, but fortunate, unfortunately it's still, it's still loose. He thinks the bearings are bad. Well, take the bearings out, have a look at them. You know, put your finger inside like that. I'm not making jokes. Ah, oh, Jesus. Just, that's what you do. Anyway, just, you can see, you'll be able to feel if, feel if there's play. I'm gonna stop doing that. You're gonna be able to feel if there's play in the bearing. Um, and if you do need to replace the bearing and you're not sure of the size, you're saying, you, you know, you can't see what size it is. I would say contact the manufacturer, contact Ridley, they will be able to help you. And also you could contact the distributor of the bike in your particular country. I know in the UK it's Madison who distribute Ridley. Um, and they should be able to point you in the direction of the correct bearing you will need for the headset of that bike. Um, let us know how you get on changing your bearings in your headset. And uh, yeah, hopefully that works out for you. And hopefully that is the problem. It sounds like it is. Next question is from Lee Oin who says, what are the material differences of a gold chain versus a standard chain? I can see the appeal if you're trying to impress Manon for a super nice in the bike vault. Gold chain! However, do you give up any durability or performance? Websites like Shimano are particularly poor in documenting this. Well, Shimano don't make gold chains, so why would they document it? Um, gold chains are made by a brand called KMC who actually make a lot of chains in the bike industry, a lot of OEM uh, chains as well. And the gold chains tend to just have, they're, they're a silver chain that has a coating applied to them, which is usually done uh, via anodizing or it might be an electrolysis process. I think it's anodizing. Either way, it tends to be purely for cosmetic, you know, aesthetic uh, purposes. I mean, they look proper cool, don't they? Um, and you know some independent testing I've seen does actually reckon they are slower slightly than just an uncoated silver chain. Um, but the jury's out on this. Different people claim different things. Uh, if it is slightly slower, it's only going to be a fraction though, and it's going to be less than the impact caused by different chain lubes and your, how clean your chain is. If your chain's dirty, that's going to cost you more watts. It's not something I would worry about. Um, and the gold coating does wear off slightly over time. Uh, you do get the silver coating underneath starting to appear after quite a bit of use on, on where the links rub against each other. Uh, in this case, it's a titanium nitride silver coating underneath. Um, and one thing to note um, is that the, the, the gold chains and their equivalent silver chains, they tend to be a bit lighter as well because they, they tend to have these slotted links uh, in the KMC chains. So if you are a weight weenie and you want to save some weight, then you, you can save quite a few grams over a standard chain there. So if you're on a hill climb bike, for example, kind of, kind of a cool thing to, to consider. Um, plus, I mean, just come on, gold chains. They look awesome. They're, they just look, they're gold. Absolutely fan dabby dozy. Bet you never thought you were going to get a Cranky's reference when you clicked on this video, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, lockdown. What's it doing to me? Right, next question. Antonio uh, Pickleboni. When I switch from dry lube to wet lube or vice versa, should I deep clean the chain? If so, what product? Uh, yes, you should. That's what the advice says. Um, for optimum performance, you should completely remove one type of lube before you put another one on. We get a lot of lube questions. <laughs> However, 
uh, I understand that that's not always possible. So there have been times in my life where I've had a big event and like a big cycling uh, race or sportive or something and I've got my bike prepped for ultimate performance with amazing dry lube on there but then the weather's taken a, a turn for the worse at the last minute and I've not got time to completely strip my drivetrain and then put wet lube on. In which case, I would say, rather than just leave the dry lube on there and then it washes off after 10 minutes into your race or a big event, just put wet lube on top of it. It's not ideal, but it's better than the dry lube washing off and you running a dry drivetrain. Also, you could consider taking a bit of wet lube out with you in a little bottle like we've shown in previous videos. That can be quite useful. Um, as for stripping it, well, any good sort of commercially available degreaser, there's, there's lots on the market. One thing I would say though is, you know, use an environmentally friendly one. Um, it's a bit more responsible. There are some more environmentally friendly than others. Um, Wendy Miller says, I've never used latex inner tubes. Oh, Wendy, you're missing out. Um, what brand would you buy if there is a better brand? Well, I love latex inner tubes. Um, and I would say go for uh, Vittoria ones. Uh, they tend to make uh, latex inner tubes for other a lot of other uh, tire manufacturers to put into their uh, tubular tires as well. So they, you know, they're, they're trusted by other brands as well. And for those unfamiliar with latex tubes, quick, quick summary, right? I reckon they're the best value performance upgrade that you can get. The reason being is that they offer lower rolling resistance in your tires. Um, ideal for time trialing or road racing. There are some disadvantages though. They are more fragile. If, you, if you're not careful, you can pop them when you install them into your tires. They can catch underneath the tire bead and you need to inflate them like pretty much every day because they are slightly porous and do leak air. But, you know, still, I would, uh, I would say for performance, consider getting them. Now, next question is from Tom Campion, who says, Hi guys, been loving the tech videos. Thanks, man. Let's have a bit of my tea. Yorkshire tea, in case you're wondering. Um, other teas are available, but they're rubbish. Um, so you've got an old Merida, which has 105 10 speed. I'm just laughing at my own jokes. <laughs> oh God. Uh, he's got an old Merida with 105 10 speed with external routing. And he was, he was looking at upgrading to electronic shifting on the bike. Cool. Would uh, I be able to route DI2 externally? Should I try and bodge drilling holes in the aluminium frame or should I just get ETAP as it's wireless? Any help would be appreciated. Oh, Tom Campion or Thom, maybe that's how you pronounce it. My motto, right? One of my mottos in life, anything for an easy life, mate. Anything for an easy life. I'd go for ETAP. <laughs> it's just going to be so much easier. Um, and I'd say get the 11-speed one, the, the previous generation, because there's loads of great deals to be had on that now. 12-speed has come out, um, and it's still a great group set. You could go for DI2, but you can't really run it externally. I wouldn't recommend you run DI2 externally with the cables. It's not designed for that. If you snagged or tore or ripped one of those cables, they're going to be expensive to replace. You don't want to be doing that. So, um, yeah, anything for an easy life? Yeah, I'd go eat out. Let us know how you get on and uh, submit your bike in the upgrade section on the app. That'd be awesome and uh, it'd be great to see it. Uh, last question this week, sad, sorry, uh, comes from Ed who says, Hi Ollie, question about disc brake wheels. In the old days of rim brakes, when a wheel was slightly out of true, it would rub against the brake pads and seriously annoy like everyone. Uh, but now a slightly, and I mean a small wobble, nothing crazy, out of true wheel has no impact on braking. It doesn't rub on anything. It's not noticeable when riding. So should I fix it? Yeah, you should fix it, man. Don't be, don't be sloppy. I mean, it might not, it might not be very noticeable now, but when you're, you know, going down a, a really fast descent or something, it could be exacerbated and you could see more of a speed wobble and it could feel quite unstable and bad. Plus, when your wheel is out of true, you've, you've actually created a point of weakness in the wheel. The spoke tension is not going to be equal all around the wheel and the wheel's strength relies on that spoke tension. 
This could lead to the problem becoming worse, the wheel getting more and more out of true, and this point of weakness could grow and ultimately the wheel could fail. Plus, it's just super annoying. Like even if it's slightly out of true, you look down at it and it's like, oh, how can you ride like that, man? So yeah, take it to a bike shop, get it fixed if you're not sure about doing it yourself, or you could you know, give it a go. We've actually got videos on how to true a wheel, so check those out, let us know how you get on, and uh, hopefully you can fix your problem. Now, hopefully we've answered some of your questions this week, and if, if we've not answered your question, you know, keep them coming in, submit them uh, down below, and use the hashtag AskGCNTech or uh, you know, get them in via social media, and we'll do our best to answer them in uh, next week's show and in f future tech clinics as well. And uh, in the meantime, if you'd like to support the channel and uh, you like what we do, well, head over to shop.globalcyclingnetwork. You can get yourself a, a cracking GCN mug and, and fill it full of tea. You know, you know the kind. There's, a, there's only one kind, and it's not from Lancashire. Right, I'm, uh, I'm gonna go wash my hands now for the uh, like 10th time today. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.